us pray. Our loving Father who liveth in love in heaven, thank you so much for giving us this wonderful day. We know we are the, you are with us here, our Father. May you guide us through in this program. It is true that we have a lot of challenges, but we do pray that in every different situation, even with people outside our Father, send the Holy Spirit to guide us through. It is true that your Bible here will give us much hope. We ask you, trusting and believing that you will be with us, be with the interpreters, and again, be with all our uh, video coverage men. Now we want to ask your Father that you may continue to be with us, for I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, and again this time I want to thank God because you, everyone here, you know today it is a possibility Sabbath. Uh, uh, since before, it has been there. Special Needs Ministry today has been changed to the Possibility Ministry. And that is the name that we are using today, from A to M. It is worldwide, that's why we are using it. It's not set aside. We know very well the Special Needs Ministry is worldwide and it is large. We are all inclusive, the, 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 uh, we can, uh, the, the disabled, widows, orphans, all people are included. So everyone can make a change. That is the topic of my sermon. Let us have the first story of this. We have a caregiver. David was doing a, a job called caregiving. Saying we had got a blind person who can lead another people. Same, we have got interpreters. We have got people who are using wheelchairs. We have got people who are different. All these people are called under possibilities ministries. I want to thank God for, give, for empowering each and every one of us for being here and know having an awareness of this ministry. We want to focus in the word of God. But before that, let us pray. Our loving Father in heaven, we ask you, Father, to send your Holy Spirit to give us strength, wisdom in our heart so that we may understand your word. We pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' holy name. Amen. The Bible Second Samuel chapter 9 and verses 1 downwards to verses 9. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was there and there was of the house of Saul's servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Are you Ziba? And he said, Your servant is he. And the king said, Is there not anyone of, of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan has yet a son who is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Mashir, the son of Amian, in, Lo Lo in Lobedah, Lodebah. Then king David sent and brought him out of the house of Mashir, the son of Amiel, Amiel from Lodebah. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, who came unto David, 
he fell on his face and in reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and answered, and answered, Behold your servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan's, your father's sake, and will, and will restore all the land of Saul, your father, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Verses 8, And he bowed himself and said, What is your servant what, that you should look up? Upon such a, a dead dog as I am, then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto you, your master's son, all that pertained to Saul and to all his house. Thank you for reading the word of God. As you can see, this verse is very clear. When the king himself, when King David was resting in his house, he had got time and it was free time, he was roaming around, but it came into his mind. Then he asked the king, is there anyone in the house of King Saul? Is there anyone who, is, who, who hears? Is there anyone in the, with the name Ziba? Then Ziba come and ask, are you Ziba? Then he says, yes, I am the servant. King David said, I want, I want to show kindness for, to, for your servant, for your father. For uh, that has been before. Your father's name, Jonathan. And I want to do it to you today to give something, to give a portion of you zip, to you, Zipa. You know what? Your father, Jonathan. Is a good care outside, a good caregiver outside there. Though we are disabled, then David assured him, "You go and call the one who is outside." Then the servant went. Some few minutes, he came back, meeting the king, and said, "What? It is a good example." You know about these people, it is all about patience. But now Jonathan is my friend. Remember, I must show you the best of mine that has been be from before. Now when he came, this man, Mephibosheth, and David assured him, I will give a portion of land to your, of your father. But he was now fearful and was all that shocked. Then he said, I will give all this to you, not because of what, but because of your father. You see, people with challenges are outside there. So many of them having a lot of challenges. They're staying outside. Hoping nothing. They have no hope. They have no help. They have nothing at all. But God is now using David coming here to uh, having a good heart and ready to give, but not hiding, but to give what? To give many hopes. And he included this person who was disabled, no, not knowing where the parents were. But now this person, disabled, be the deaf, be the blind, you have, we have to copy the, what David did. That's what we have to do. Let us continue with the verse. Times ever came, the dis, uh, this disabled,
came and bowed. But it was not that important. He was like a dead, it, he was like unto a dead dog. That is what he said. But God himself made him. That is the importance that we look at. Not any other thing. That's why he came and stayed in the house. Eating with the king, with King David. Then, after staying with him there, the world at large, many people outside there were invited to come and fellowship here in this Sabbath. We are all happy because we are to look upon Christ. The Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 19 The book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. Then said he also to him that bade him, When you give a dinner or a supper, call not your friends, nor your brethren, neither your kinsmen, nor your rich neighbors, lest they bid you again, and a recompense be made be made you, but then you give a feast called the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you shall be blessed, for they cannot recompense you, for you shall be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Paul advises us all that when David did this to Mephibosheth, it is true that we are doing this in the same way just because if we know our, uh, only if we look at only our friends not looking at the poor our neighbors we don't invite them why because they don't pay back it is better that we do invite all these people who are not able because the reward is from above the disabled the mental, uh, those people with mental illness, let them come and have the feast together because it is in the word of God. Let us look upon in the word of God. Praise the Lord. It is the same way what the Bible says that David did. The Bible itself, Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, Verses 9. Matthew chapter 9, verses 9. If you read. Verses 9. And as Jesus passed forth from, he, from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me, and he arose and followed him. Uh, in that time when Jesus was passing by, then he came into that region, he saw Matthew sitting, collecting some uh, finance. This Matthew was a tax collector, and he said to him, rise up and follow me. Then immediately Matthew rose and followed Jesus. He had no stress because previously he had got a lot of stress. He left and he abandoned everything he had and together with his house and became a disciple of Jesus. He was having everything, but he could look at Jesus. He could lift his eyes and look at him, saying, Teacher, how will I eat if I follow, do follow you? Then Jesus said, Just follow me if you know that it has got a meaning. I will come when I promise and truly I will give you riches. Jesus wants us all to look upon him. 
because it is us to have hope, no stress, to help us and be saved from slavery. It is that Jesus wants us all to be with him, all the disabled, all the blind, all the deaf. Let us all hear the word of God, because not saying who will go, it is me or you, it is the church, let, uh, let us invite them so that they come and see Jesus praise his name. Praise the name of God. It is the same way King David and this man Mephibosheth gave a piece of land to him including all that his dad's. Having a, small, a young son, a servant, and he gave a very big portion of land to use. Food uh, uh, was so much. But if, if, if because it was God, that's why food was there, no oppression. But if we are oppressing people, if we are looking at them awkwardly just because they're disabled, let us not do that, but help them. Let us be ready to do that. Praise the Lord. This, uh, the time when King David had finished doing that, he went with him into the house. He cared for him as his own son. Then he was happy he was so much happy and forget all about his problems that he had. In the book of Second Kings, chapter 2, verses 4. In the book of Second Kings, Now they, they, they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of prophets unto Elisha, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant did fear the Lord, and the Creator has come to take unto him my two sons to be slaves. Creditor, sorry. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you, what have you in, your, in the house? And she said, your handmaid has not anything in the house except a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow you vessels outside all of all your neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And then and when you are come in, you shall shut the door upon you and upon your sons, and shall pour unto oil out into all those vessels and you shall set aside that which is full. So she went for him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. In that story in the Bible, it is this prophet Elisha. When that widow who met Elisha then had got a challenge, who was outside then, this widow had got nothing in life. He was not that free. He was, uh, she was a slave. Then before that, she was sent to go and borrow vessels, being that she had none, even from neighbors. Then with the son, go back into the house as, in, as uh, instruction was. Don't worry. After going back, Elisha the prophet said, you, uh, gave a special advice. What do you have? in your house. It is only a vessel of oil. Then, it is true, Elisha said, you go, 
take even empty vessels, go and collect oils, and go into your house, pour it inside, full in each vessel, after which you can give it out. Then have money paid back. Then the special ones you may set aside. She went and did the same. That time she did that, she did everything and Prophet Elisha saw it and counted everything and said it has been successful. Now you have forgotten all the problems. Now you have got a smiling life. Your son and you plus everything go inside the house. Don't worry. It has been a challenging life. But nobody to help. But thank God. God used prophet Elisha just to save this woman who had got a very great challenge in life. Having no hope. Same we are coming to church. Not in the same good way. We come to hear from pastor church leaders. We also come, others are coming here with nothing, challenges, stress, tears. To search, on, uh, others are here to search only for problems. But God is all there to open our ways. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now if we look at the Bible, the book of Mark, chapter 10, and verses 5. Mark chapter 10, verses 46. Okay, the Bible says, uh, But you know that they, they who are accounted the, to, to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their leaders exercise authority over them. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever would be great among you shall be your servant. And whosoever of you will be the first shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. It is okay that is in the book of Mark chapter number 10, verses 46 and 44, 54. Remember, the blind man by the name Bartimaeus. This blind person was disabled. He had got a very challenging life including a lot of stress. So wondering how he could proceed on with his life. But he was also pre uh, wondering on how he could prepare and get his meals. But that time on the way, people were so full passing by here and there. There were a lot of food he could earn. Then he moved nearby the gate there, sat there to collect some uh, taxes as people were passing by. That, by that time when he was begging for money, he had uh, so many people passing and raised his voice. Jesus! Jesus! Then people were cooling him down. But the blind man himself was searching, was touching, and as, at the same time he was hearing a lot of people coming. Then one disciple came and asked, what do you want? You are a blind man. You can't see again. But when Jesus called him and asked him some questions, he answered Jesus by saying that I want to see again. Jesus said, you are free and you are forgiven. Go, you can now see. But now it is the decision that he made to follow Jesus. Only to follow Jesus and all would be fed down. It is that with all the challenges that he had, Jesus accepted him with, with no doubt, thinking about what to do. 
are waiting to go and ask for, from, from, from a couple, but the same, uh, the very, very moment, now, just now, it is your correct time that I'm saying from the life history of the deaf person that never doubt, but the time when he could see, he believed and followed Jesus on the spot. Praise the Lord. We know that when we want to accept Jesus, we must be ready not to wait. In the book of Mark, chapter number 7, verses 4. Mark chapter 7, verse 4. And when they came from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things that there be, which they have received to hold. And, uh, and as the washing of cups and pots, bronze vessels, and, the, and of the tables. Mark chapter 6. Verses 31 to 37. May you continue. Chapter 6. The Bible says, The healing of the deaf and mute man. And again, departing from the borders of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the region of the Decapolis, and they brought unto him one that was deaf, and had, and, uh, had an impedent in, in his speech, and they besought him to put his hand upon him. And he took him, he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and his feet and touched his tongue. And looking up, up, up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ephtapha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much, so much, the more zealous they proclaimed it, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He has, he has done all, these, all, all things well. He makes both the deaf, and, uh, the deaf to hear, and the dumb to speak. That verse in the Bible, the very time when Jesus was coming, other people were so many and gathered, saying, this is Jesus. Yes, true, it's Jesus who makes people to see. It is Jesus. They were surprised. Is this the man? Then they called came when he came he said here is a deaf it, it, is, it is not able to hear then they called him you come Jesus touched his ears then in a little while he was free I am saying this this death felt in his heart that he was so joyful. He was so much happy. Then went and proclaimed it outside what Jesus had done to him. The same way to us here, we have to believe Jesus, to go out and tell people about Jesus. It is true that Jesus himself will be able to change our life and forget the worldly things. Brothers and sisters, let us go outside. Call the blind, call the deaf, all people with disabled who have got no hope. Not, and let us tell them not to wait, but to have hope that Jesus is coming soon. My next verse, then I'll be done. Jesus, when he will be coming, let, it find, uh, let the day find us very ready. 
Lord, because we have been having a very long time of challenges. But God will bless us all when we come to him in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome Pastor Maena to close with us with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for having ministered to us in a very special way through Pastor Albert. We thank you for the message that we have had that speaks to our hearts. We pray that as we work with those who are in the Adventist Possibilities Ministries like Pastor Albert and many others, you will give us ways in which that uh, we can reach out to them continually. We pray that you will continually bless us on this Sabbath day, that we will feel your presence and be blessed by your Spirit throughout this day, throughout all the days of our lives. The honor and glory of your name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to thank each and every one of you who has tuned in to YouTube or watched us on Facebook today. And we want to thank you for worshiping with us today. We hope and believe that each of you has been blessed by our service. And pray that God will continually bless you as we minister to you. Uh, next Sabbath, we will be starting our week of prayer here at Milimani. And so we will be ministering, addressing that in mind. And let's pray that during this coming week of prayer, beginning 2nd to 9th, all of us will be blessed by the services and that we will pray for the world more uh, individually and collectively as a family as we seek the face of God, that God will redeem his people and hear our prayers from heaven. Thank you very much and God bless you. We look forward to ministering to you again next Sabbath. We are saying, keep safe, uh, stay at home, make sure you have masks on you when you walk out and let's ensure that we are keeping distance, social distance, so that all of us will be safe when all is said and done. God bless you, and look forward to seeing you again next Sabbath. Oh